Hi, I'm Mike Bellevue, and I write for Guns of the Old West. And today we're going to be uh, shooting a replica of Winchester's 1866 Yellow Boy carbine. Now, this particular model is made by Uberti, and it's imported into the United States by Cimarron Firearms in Fredericksburg, Texas. This is a replica of the 1866 Winchester lever action rifle. Uh, this was the first rifle to actually bear the Winchester brand name. The previous rifles uh, were the Henry repeaters. Uh, this, at this point in 1866, Oliver Winchester had taken over control of the company and it was uh, now named after him. His other investors had all moved on to other pursuits and they're pretty famous guys in their own right. Uh, Smith and Wesson are a couple of them. So now he had control and basically they made an improvement to the Henry rifle. And this is improved in uh, three major areas. One of the major improvements was a big cost savings was this separate magazine tube. In the Henry rifles the magazine was made integral to the barrel. The barrel and the magazine were all made out of one piece of solid steel and the magazine had to be machined out and it was very expensive. This is a Henry barrel and magazine and you can see it's pretty complex. I mean this is one single bar of steel that has to be machined out uh, for the magazine, bored and rifled for the barrel itself uh, and everything's going to work out fine. It was very expensive. So this is something that Winchester wanted to get away from. So by going to the separate uh, tube magazine, they were able to save a good bit of money, and they were able to offer a lot of barrel options that they really couldn't offer practically when they had to make the magazine integral to the barrel. So you could have a round barrel like this one, or a full octagon, or an octagon to round, and they could do all of that machining without, have to, without having to uh, do the complex machining for the magazine underneath it. So that was the first big improvement, and that really affected cost. Uh, going to the tube magazine allowed the second improvement as well, because on the Henry, there was a magazine follower that went down here pushing the cartridges along. And that, that required a slot in the magazine itself, and you couldn't have a practical handguard on it. I mean, there were ways of doing it, but, uh, but really, it was a lot more complex. But with the tube magazine, they could have this wooden forearm, and it made it much more comfortable to shoot, because if you ever shot a Henry with black powder on a hot day, that barrel heats up. I, mean, I generally have to wear gloves to do it if I'm shooting a match with a Henry. And then the final improvement, and this was a huge one for the customers, was this patented King loading gate. And that allowed cartridges to be loaded from the receiver instead of drop down the end of the magazine. It speeded up loading and it also made loading quite a bit safer. Now this gun continued the same toggle link action, basically the same receiver except uh, for the loading gate, as the Henry rifle and it used the same anemic cartridge, the 44 Henry rimfire. But it was still a very popular gun, more popular than the Henry, because of these improvements. And, and we see these, uh, these same features carrying on to all future Winchester lever action rifles. Uh, these modern replica 1866s are chambered for 44 Special, and you can get them in 38 Special or 45 Colt. But this one is probably the closest round to the, uh, the 44 Henry round. And for a rifle, this is pretty anemic. I mean, that, that's one of the biggest problems with, uh, with these old toggle link guns, the 66s and the 73s. But particularly the 66s and the Henrys, is they fired a very anemic round. But some frontiersmen, guys like uh, Yellowstone Kelly, they use this little round to take everything right up to buffalo and grizzly bear, so it can be done. So let's put a few more downrange and uh, see how they go. Ha <laughs> ha. 
Now, this is a pretty uh, typical result with these Winchesters because they eject, you know, straight up, right? So I caught this one in my hat. The uh, the last time I fired out out here, I didn't film it. I had three of them in my hat, so that's uh, <laughs> that's just one of the hazards. If you weren't wearing a broad-brimmed hat, they'd maybe drop right down the back of your collar. <laughs> well, let's see how the 1866 does on some clay birds. Not bad. Well, we'll finish up with the bad guys view of the 1866 carbine.